talk about the the injuries real quick. Quarterback Tua, Herbert, Love, Wilson. I think Love could be back. I'm putting it at a straight 50-50 here. Russell Wilson, I don't really care if he's back. Um, this is just the way I'm throwing him out there, Ben. Justin Herbert, uh, interesting spot here against Pittsburgh, but again, don't really care if he's back. Interesting spot in the sense that I wouldn't be playing him anyway. And Tua, they haven't put him on the IR yet, but there's just no way he's playing this week. Zero, literally a zero percent chance. Yeah. So when we get to each position, and if I forget, just do me a favor. Like I said, I'm 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 not I'm not right today. Uh, if I forget, remind me to mention the injuries at each position once we get there, because it's going to be super important for for running back and wide receiver. So I'm, I'm counting on you for that. You're talking to me? Yeah, I'm saying remind oh. me if I forget to mention those injuries at the top of each position. Clearly, I'm uh, not paying attention. Go ahead. The top of quarterback, Lamar against Dallas, they just what they you are you're right. That might be the weirdest week we've ever seen. There's no explanation for I know there's a lot of parody, but like I don't I have no explanation for and what a game that's gonna be. So the Ravens, the Ravens are gonna be 0 and 3, or Dallas, after winning 16 straight regular season home games, is gonna lose two straight and drop to one and two. Yeah, it's crazy if Baltimore were to drop to 0-3, and, and now they have to play. I know you're like, oh, what do you mean they have to play in Dallas? Dallas just got smoked. Yeah, I get it, but there's so much parity in the NFL that you know this. Week over week, it doesn't actually mean anything. No, of course not. It re- It actually doesn't. Like I, like Cincinnati know, good- la- last week. I, I bet Cincinnati in that game. Yeah, uh, should have won. Since Cincinnati should have – I want to say should have won, but – Cincinnati, after losing and be getting embarrassed to the Patriots, came uh-huh. out and and fought tooth and nail down that, that one that interception. By the way, was just one of the sickest things I've ever seen. But yeah, it's there's so much parity in this league. I will say though, like Lamar Jackson, do you, does Lamar Jackson have trouble running against you know Micah Parsons and company as we saw uh, against a good pass rush for. For, for the Raiders, do you pay for him? Do you pay for Hurts without A.J. Brown? Or do we go to Kyler Murray at 6,900 against the Detroit Lions in a 52 total game? I think most people uh, are going to go to Kyler Murray. That's that game's going to be so chalky. So chalky. Uh, it's going to emulate Cardinals-Rams and Lions-Bucks, two of the most prevalent games from week two, and, and I totally get it. Uh, Lamar and Hurts, I, to- I think, to- make total sense. I'm going to just throw this out there, and this is not a a typical uh, Ben Razza to quote myself in the third person comment. What about C.J. Stroud? I feel like no one is going to go to him. He's got ample weapons. Minnesota, obviously no weather or anything. Uh, Stroud could be really lost. I might go to Houston Stacks, and I am not a big Houston guy. I have Stroud on the list as well, as a matter of fact. Does not mean I love him here, but I think... He might be he might be flying under the radar a little bit. I, I love what Kyler's I saw. One. What's that? I'm sorry. I said I still think Kyler for me is one. He he has to be right now. In that, like if you're just taking, say, over sixty five hundred as your high price, I, I it's 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 Kyler, but I don't know. I like Lamar too. Like I you can never go wrong with Lamar. Eventually, that insane Lamar Jackson game is coming. This game could either be 17-14 or 41-40. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, eventually, that insane Lamar game is coming. He's played two games, and one of them was pretty insane already. It just happened to be the Thursday night game. Right. Baltimore's defense does not look like the defense from that we've seen in the past at all at all so if that's the case you could see this game evolving into a serious shootout i kind of like lamar i, I th- also this is one of those spots right where like you love the rushing yard props i'm tempted to just i don't even know what it is yet but i'll be really interested to see what his rushing yard prop is because it, it, what if it's just one of these scenarios where lamar has to do a ton 
within the range of outcomes for sure. And Derrick Henry is not Alvin Kamara. Like Alvin Kamara is what I mean is I don't think you just go, all right, here, let's, let's try and replicate what they did with Alvin Kamara last week and feed Derrick Henry every opportunity we get. I, I'm not convinced. I, I don't love, I don't even love Derrick Henry, despite what we saw with Alvin Kamara last week in Dallas. No, it's, it's not to me, not even remotely applicable. And they don't seem to have it figured out of what they want to do uh, late in these games with Derrick Henry. So I'm to me with quarterbacks, if I'm going to give, I, I feel like pricing tiers are kind of agnostic with quarterback, like top three, I would have Kyler one. Um, I would have Jared Goff too. I know he's, he's 6,500, but calling I calling him mid range. That's fine. Like Just yeah, so we threw, can do our tiers appropriately. He did it. He threw the ball 55 times against Tampa Bay. I know. Uh, he has not looked good. He's got one touchdown and three picks and he doesn't run. But that type of volume can't be ignored. And he's got I'll ample go back weapons. To him. Yeah. I'll go right back to him. I have no issues with it at all. The question now becomes, does Amon Ross St. Brown play? Like, I think he's going to be a legitimate question mark. If he doesn't, it makes it easier in my mind. Yeah. that's And wait till we get to tight end. Tight end, I feel like you almost have to pay up for this week. That was my... St. Brown, just to complain a little more, not that we've we've hit our allotment, like he had 19 targets and he had a good game, but when you have 19 targets to not score, I had I had him in really good anytime touchdown round robins and he fell on the two yard line and then he got hurt. Uh yeah, he bounced back. I know a lot of people didn't think 19 targets, that's gonna work. I had a three leg parlay that I gave out in in on Tails in the Discord. Matt, uh, Jared Goff, 300 plus passing yards. He had 307. Amon Ross St. Brown, 100 plus receiving yards. He had 119. And Amon Ross St. Brown, anytime touchdown. So, yep. yes. I, and it was, I think it was 50 to win 800. I could have, I could have used that as well. He was so close, too. Yeah, he had many chances to score in that game. So close. Yeah, I would go. I probably don't go Jalen Hurts here, even though I, I was you, you have to be happy to see the rushing upside again, though. I mean, it was back. That was really, really encouraging that we saw him run for what 85 yards. That was yeah, beautiful. I mean, he was moving. He had a great game. You went Kyler. I'm gonna go Lamar up top. Like I, this just feels like a desperation spot, you know. If you go 0 and 3. You go 0-3 as the, the Ravens, that would be sh – how shocking would that be, seriously? Like, what would you have put the odds that the Ravens were going to go 0-3 to start the season? Granted, you have to factor in matchups at Dallas, at Kansas City, but at home against uh, Las Vegas. There's a lot of – yeah, I mean, there are a lot of guys. That's, that's why I'm a little interested in quarterback. I feel like the last couple of weeks, for the most part, I have paid – up this week, I've got some dudes uh, in the lower ranges that I'm pretty interested in. Can't wait to guess. Mid tier I mean, for for me is golf. Okay. Uh, like I, I was one. I was thinking to myself, do I have any interest in Brock Purdy with Debo being out in a more concentrated offense? But I, I don't think I want to do that. But man, the Rams the Rams might be really bad. So somebody mentioned this somewhere. I don't even know who it was. The Rams, I'm a big Sean McVay guy. Why do they play? They, they've done this for years now. They play their starters way too long in games, and it really pisses me off. Well, I needed it because I needed that Kyron yeah. touchdown to cap off that, that right. parlay. I also bottom. needed that Kyron touchdown really bad, but I don't like that philosophy. They've done that a couple times over the years, and it really makes no sense. Didn't Jonathan Gannon do the same thing though? Like you needed a McBride touchdown and he was still out there up 41-10 or well, whatever. That was, was just he yeah, that was a gift, literally a gift from the gods because he didn't actually score, which was fantastic. Uh, Connor fumbled in the end zone and he just got it. But who do you think? I mean, take a shot. I'll give you a shot. Who do you think my cheap quarterback is? Okay. And by the way, Baker is at least semi-viable here, but I don't, but I would rather just go Godwin instead of Baker Mayfield and hope that. Patrick Sertan sticks on Mike Evans because yeah. again, Sertan shut down George Pickens, shut down DK Metcalf, 
He's the best out there. Godwin could have another huge game. So just putting that out there. Um, well, Derek Carr has to be one of them. No. Really? I mean, he's definitely playable, but not, okay. I, I think not the guy he, I'm talking about. He's one for me. Is it egregious? Is it a guy I don't like? Because I have a couple in mind. I mean, I, I <laughs> this is where I give it away. I certainly don't like this guy, but I, I go to this team all the time and I'm doing it again. You go to this team all the time. That Okay, Deshaun. Yeah. Yeah, I have him written down. He's 5,500. He's facing the Giants. The Adam. Giants, if if Washington had a competent offense, the Giants are getting given up 50 points in that game. I mean, how many times did Jaden Daniel getting him get him into the to the red zone? Six times? Uh, Seriously, six times? Yeah, I mean, I I believe there was only field goals. It was just it was there absurd. Were. There were they they. Wait a second. Was it 2118? Yeah. It was 2118. So they kicked seven field goals? I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. <sighs> they, no, I know it was only weirdest field week goals. ever. What? Just a weird week. But yeah, Deshaun the Giants, Watson. The Giants defense is bad. I mean, they're yes. they're outright bad. And all right, so let's see. Scoring summary. Cyber, 27-yard, 45-yard, 27-yard, 29-yard, 33, and 30. Like, these are almost all red zone trips. Yeah, they're not even long field goals. No. 27, 26, 27, 33, 30, there was a 45. So, um, yeah. Seven field goals. That's just stupid. It's so stupid. I don't care, though, because I had I, my highest exposed player was Malik Neighbors. And I feel good that I was vindicated on that. The Millie Maker winning lineup was Daniel Jones and Malik Neighbors. Yeah. I, I'm I'm happy to be vindicated there because bad players on bad teams can still get it done if you have the right build around them. Unfortunately, I didn't with, with them. But I had a ton of Daniel Jones and Neighbors. Neighbors had a 63% target share, 18 targets on 28 attempts. I don't like Daniel Jones this week against Cleveland. I'm not going to neighbors this week in Cleveland, but that was just, you know, that was a smash spot for the two of them. And Jones wasn't even great. He had like 19. Anyway, talk to me about Watson. Is this just a matchup thing saying Amari's cheap, Judy's cheap, Watson's cheap. Let's try it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this to me is the type of aggressive stack that can win tournaments. You're not allocating a ton of salary. You have ample options. Deshaun Watson Although he sucks, uh, he's thrown the ball 45 and 34 times. He's got rushing upside. They're at home against the Giants. I don't think it's going to be a popular stack. It checks almost every box of a sub-6K quarterback that I would look for. You know what? It's crazy because you know how down I am on Watson. I don't think he's very good. Neither do I, honestly. But I don't think Daniel Jones is good either. Mm. So you don't need to be good. That's not even that relevant. Exact, exactly. Exactly. Right? Like, that's that's what it comes down to. It's a home spot. They're big favorites. You know what sucks, though, is you're going to have a tough time figuring out Dante, Dante Foreman or, or Jerome Ford after the split we saw last week. Uh, I know they were up, but Foreman just started taking over. I'd rather, I'd rather go to the passing game. Judy is $5,200. Amari Cooper is $6,100. He's been a ghost this year, but at the same time, he has 17 targets through two games. They just can't connect. The Giants are so bad that Deshaun Watson and Cleveland could look very good. I'm 100%. You probably didn't expect me to say this, but I'm 100% with I you. I am surprised, honestly. Well, you shouldn't be, though, because I'm, I'm always willing to go to bad teams when they're cheap and they're in great spots because one of those sides has to win out. A hundred percent. Again, it's, yeah, it's not about, and that's really, you know, if, if Carr takes a ton of this ownership and I get it, he's been, I mean, good doesn't even put it. He's been like comically good. It doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. I will look gladly to Deshaun Watson or honestly, I'll, no one's going to play Geno Smith uh, at home against Miami. He's got his weapons. 
You saw what happened with DK Metcalf when he wasn't going against Sertan. He was running wild uh, against New England. These are the type of low-owned stacks I'm going to target this week. I also wonder, is Tyler Lockett uh, starting? Are we starting to see the decline in the full-out rise of Jackson Smith and Jigba? Because last week, the target share between Metcalf and JSN was nuts, right? Metcalf had four. I had him in that touchdown parlay in the round robin as well. He had 14 targets on the day. J- JSN had 16 targets on the day. That is incredible. When you're considering, you know, Geno Smith threw 44 times, right? So you're talking about a, uh, what, 36% target share for JSN, 32 for Metcalf. It's not sustainable with that type of volume. But if those are the clear one and twos, if Kenneth Walker remains out, because Charbonnet's not that good, uh, this could be another spot that that we get to. Absolutely. And for what it's worth, I love the Devon HN run back. Oh, you have easy run. I mean, Miami's such a great team with all that stuff. So I like the way this board sets up for quarterback. Me too. Uh, I have a couple other guys on the list. So Carr, Gino, and Watson are all on the list when I write these guys down. There were two others just to get your thoughts before we move on. Uh, Darnold, just because that team has been good against Houston, not one of my favorite spots, but throw them out there. And Garner Minshew against Carolina. I think I like the run game a lot more in that game than I do Garner Minshew. Uh, yeah, I mean, I... I get it with those guys. They're just behind the guys that I already talked about. Mostly just for for small things. When you look at Darnold, he's been very good, but good in the actual sense. Not He's thrown the ball 24 and 26 times. It seems like the goal is don't screw it up. Uh, that's not great for fantasy purposes, and he's been awesome. And Garner Minshew, there's just a real chance that Carolina, for the third straight week, does nothing. And if that's the case... The Raiders will be more than happy to just lean on the backs, and then that's going to really hurt our ceiling. Yeah, Jeremy said, "Ain't no way I'm playing Watson." I get it, but sometimes you just got to be—you just have to play ugly spots. Sometimes you do. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Desmond Ritter won a milli last year, right? Matter of fact, we were all over that on this show. Daniel Jones won a milli last year, and yet, and last week, or sorry, on Sunday. Watson doesn't have to be good for the season. He can have a decent game. And, and and one more thing to consider. Sometimes I think people, Ben, ignore the pricing on these stacks. It's what weird. I mean by that is that if it's a cheap stack that is good, doesn't have to be incredible, but good, and the rest of your pieces fit around it, then you're perfect. I mean, that's the that's the beautiful thing of, being able to go get C.D. Lamb or, or Jefferson or Tyreek or any of these pay-up options, you're not going to be able to do that if you jam, you know, Stroud and Collins and or Lamar, you know, some of these pay-up options. So for me, that's where I'm I'm pretty set at quarterback. Running back to me is a little trickier. Katz is a legend. Said so this is about building a winning lineup, not worrying about how good a guy is. I love what. Yeah, right. Exactly. And in all likelihood, Watson's not in the Millie lineup, the winning lineup, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. Richie Smalls, under 17K for a Watson stack. Yeah, and assuming Njoku is still out, which um, I, don't, I don't think he plays. I know he's not ruled out yet, but I don't think he plays, Ben. I think he misses another week. You probably see a good amount of targets concentrated around, around Judy and, and Amari, so I'm all about it. 